you know, it's funny. I love my, what I call my do-overs because it reminds me of my own little pet peeve about all the ministry and all the years that I've worked behind the scenes and <laughs> so many different ministries that technology is only as good as a tool that we use in our hands to produce something that we hope that the tool itself makes it easier and convenient for us to do that which the tool is designed for. And so too with like sharing devotionals. I remember the times when a brother used to come to me there. I was in a small town, kind of like a farm community, and really up in mountains. So it's not really, well, south of us there was farms, and north of us there was mountains, and we were in a river basin. And it had farm town mentality, you know, where people cared about people, and you know, you, you got along with your neighbor, and there were times when you didn't. <laughs> but we had a little old open to the community prayer meeting every morning that you could come down to and have devotionals and just pray. And a friend of mine used to come and pick me up and take me down to it. And it was a blast because I didn't have a car at the time. But it reminded me that how easy it is to take for granted or sometimes to get too carried away with our technology and forget about our ability to just simply be the person we are supposed to be with each other. How God wants us to have fellowship one with another, to commune one with another, to abide with each other. A lot of times, God has taken me to the wayside because of my disability that I had at one time. And the fact I nearly died and it nearly killed me and I was in the hospital so much that I got pretty used to being alone, you know? It was just me and God and my devotionals. And so, for me, it's not uncommon to find myself alone because even like today when I had to resort to my water, I still have consequences of that time where I get dehydrated now and, oh, it's, I need to be a little more mindful of my health than most people. But even in that, <laughs> I am healthier than most people that I know and can dance the feet off anybody. But the point is, is that in doing do-overs like I'm doing right now with my utmost, it isn't so much a challenge or a burden that needs to be like, oh my God, now what do I do? I lost it. It's gone. It was removed from the internet. There was a break in the connection. There was too much sun, too much light. Who cares? If you're in a church and the sound system goes out, what do you do? Do you lose it? Where do you use it? <laughs> me I've never had a problem with disasters I have a problem with the everyday normal when it's just normal settings and everything's going smooth I can't handle it I'd rather have a natural disaster I'm good for those but that's why God has designed each one of us differently and uniquely he made you different than me I'm sure your nose is a lot smaller than mine of course somebody's going to tell me no it isn't and send me a proboscis that I'll be jealous of but the point being is that Jesus loves us as we are. He takes us someplace else that we want to be, and he makes us into that which is conformable of his image. So one way we get there is not just do-overs in technology, but do-overs in our life. Do-overs like when you blow it, when you fail, when you sin. When you screwed up, when you didn't read your devotion. <laughs> For me, I grab mine all through the day, morning, noon, and night. And I keep my Bible, and I read my Bible, and I study those things too. Come ye after me, Mark 117. Wherefore, the selective affinity dies, and the sanctified abandon lives. One of the greatest hindrances in coming to Jesus is the excuse of temperament, my attitude. We make our temperament or attitude and our natural affinities barriers to coming to Jesus. The first thing we realize when we come to Jesus is that he pays no attention to whatever our natural affinities are. We have the notion that we can consecrate our gifts to God. You cannot consecrate what is not yours. 
There is only one thing you can consecrate to God, and that is your right to yourself. Romans 12.1 If you will give God your right to yourself, he will make a holy experiment out of you. <laughs> God's experiments always succeed. The one mark of a saint is the moral originality which springs from abandonment to Jesus Christ. In the life of a saint, there is this amazing wellspring of original life all the time. The Spirit of God is a well of water springing up, perennially fresh. It's always new. The saint realizes that it is God who engineers circumstances. Consequently, there is no whining. There is just a reckless abandonment to Jesus. Never make a principle out of your experience. Let God be as original with other people as he is with you. If you abandon to Jesus and come when he says come, he will continue to say come through you. You will go into life reproducing the echo of Jesus Christ saying to others come. And the result is every soul who has abandoned to come to Jesus will know that not only have you decided to walk with him, but that he is calling them to come. Have I come to Jesus? Will I come now? Will you? Hearing God speak is about as simple as it is put right there. Will you come to Jesus? Will you come? Will you listen? Will you hear what it is that God would speak to you today? Will you do whatever it is that God causes you to connect with, to respond to, to, to know in your heart that, you know, that wacko weirdo on that video, you know, he said something that made sense to me and that little part of it, I didn't get anything else out of all the rest of it, but that one little part, that connected. Well, that little one part is God and the rest is me, so follow that. The point being is that God knows you and applies what is fitting for you in your life, in your day, in the moment that you choose to click on a video and watch it, or the moment you choose to bow your head and pray and listen. The moment you decide that there's more to God than meets the eye, <laughs> so to speak, and that the reality of a living God is that He not only can walk with you, but that He can talk with you, that you can hear His voice, that you can know that God is real. Jesus is alive. It's not a question of some argument about religion and faith. It's a question of knowing who you know. And that's how simple it is, like a child. When Jesus said, come unto me, they came. Will you? I hope so. He's calling.